Hey there, how are you doing today? I am so glad to get to spend some time with you today at the conference. My name is Erica Johns and I'm the owner of enrichmentstudies.com, which is where I help homeschool families incorporate more fine arts into their lives in a really easy way. Um, but in addition to that, I love to encourage other homeschool moms because I myself have been a homeschool mom for a pretty long time. We're just now finishing up our 20th year since we started homeschooling and I have six kids. So at this point, my kids are now 15 to 25 years old. The oldest three are all graduated. My oldest two are married and have children. I'm, I'm a grandmother. A mumsy actually and um, so that is a very fun stage of life and so I'm down to my final three teenage boys that are still being homeschooled and um, the end is in sight I can see it it's only a couple years away and then my career as a homeschool mom is done so <laughs> um, but today what I want to talk about is how to deal with homeschool naysayers. And I'm sure probably most of us, at one point or another, have had to deal with somebody that's got some sort of, something negative to say about homeschooling. And um, over the years, I've come to believe that there's like three different types of people that each need their own way of being handled <laughs> and um and believe it or not some of these things can actually be really good for you so um this isn't going to be one of those like um negative like let's fight back with everybody sort of things i think that there's actually some really good opportunities that can come for us come come for us as homeschool moms if we're willing to be open and think about what opportunities are presented when we deal with homeschool naysayers. So let's jump in, shall we? Um, the first kind of person is my favorite. It's the genuinely concerned person. This is somebody who's probably close to you. They know you well, they know your kids, and this is a person who maybe is willing to tell you something not just the thing you want to hear, but maybe the thing you need to hear. So, for instance, maybe they are worried about you. Like maybe you have health challenges or you've been dealing with depression or overwhelm or, um, you know, some sort of difficulty in your life and they just think like, wow, that seems like a really big thing for you to take on and I'm worried about you. Um, they may be know have observed something about your children that they're concerned about like you know maybe you've got children with like extra special needs so like on top of the difficulty of just teaching a regular kid school stuff you've got a child with extra challenges and maybe they're wondering like how's that gonna go for you how are you going to do it maybe you've got a child that's um exceptionally brilliant and they're wondering how will you help this child reach their full potential and like maybe would this child be better going to school in a different setting. Um, maybe this is a person who knows you've got an anger problem. Maybe you're mean to your kids and they've seen it and they're just wondering, this is really a good situation for you all to be together all the time. Um, what are some other ideas? Just, this is someone who's gonna have the insight into what's really up with you. And it can be tough to hear But why it might be tough to hear is because maybe it's kind of true. And maybe you actually really need the value of that outside perspective coming from someone that you respect and care for that you know truly has your best interest at heart. And they're not trying to argue with you or judge you or whatever, but they're just like, are you sure that this is really the right time, the right circumstance, you know, for you to take this on. What a blessing to have a person in your life that will tell you what you need to hear, okay? It's so easy as homeschool moms to kind of like 
get in a bubble. Sometimes we're isolated and so maybe we don't have very many people that can like help us kind of have a balance in our perspective. So it can be hard for us to like be self-aware, especially if you've got a lot of little kids or you're, you're, you're overwhelmed for whatever reason in your life. You know, you're just so busy trying to, you know, do all the things that there are to do. We can kind of lose track of like, what's up? And having somebody that can kind of give you a little reality check can be really, really helpful because you probably really need to address it. Um, certainly if you've got issues with anger, with depression, with um, disorganization, like these are things like you need to get help for that. Like, like homeschooling is just going to make it that much harder. So I'm not saying you can't homeschool with any of these things going on. Certainly you can. But what I'm saying is these are there's so many things that like homeschooling is going to like intensify. So you want to go ahead and say like, yes, that's true. I do need to work on this. So, you know, do you need help, you know, planners or some sort of system in place for your home organization? Do you need to get some help for a health issue? Is there, you know, should you be getting out more to exercise or get some fresh air? Maybe you're like an introvert that's never getting any time to yourself. So like maybe that's like contributing to why you're like angry or exhausted or whatever. I don't know exactly what it would be for each and every thing, but I think it's really important to be able to take like honest stock of what's up. And when you've got that person in your life that's willing to say, I'm worried about this, listen up and, and take it into consideration. Um, you know, it's so tempting to be defensive, especially when we hear something that's kind of ouch. Um, I would just challenge you to try to really come from a place of like humility and appreciation and just tell the person, you know, I'm so glad that I have you as a friend and that you're willing to tell me something that probably felt risky to say. Thank you for telling me that. I'm gonna be thinking about it. And then actually do think about it. You know, you don't have to, you know, maybe you wanna talk about it with them because maybe they have more things that they wanna say or some ideas for you, which would be great. Um, you know, because maybe they're like, you know, way farther down the road. I'm like, you know what she really needs that would help her? How wonderful that you don't have to do it all yourself if you've got that kind of person. Um, you know, or maybe you just you just want to think about it to yourself. And you know what? It doesn't mean that they're 100% right. It doesn't mean that you have to totally agree with every single thing that was said. But it's good to be aware and to, to not be afraid of a little bit of constructive criticism or cautions or wise counsel because homeschooling is a huge job, you guys. I mean, you know it. It's a, it's a huge responsibility and you know, not every situation is conducive to it, you know, being like healthy and successful and that's okay. You know, maybe you need to make an adjustment. Maybe you need to ask for help. Maybe you need to find additional resources to help you support your kids and the things that they need. Like there's no shame in that. That is, you know, you're like the facilitator. It doesn't have to all be on you to teach every single thing, to learn every single thing, to become an expert at every single thing. And sometimes if somebody can shed some light and say, hey, I'm really worried about Tommy because of this. And then you can be like, yeah, that's right. Tommy's kind of getting lost in the shuffle there. And I do need to address his problem with this and, you know, and then start to, to go forward and make it better. So um, I just, I think that's such a blessing and such a great opportunity both to honor a friendship like that, a relationship in your life like that, where somebody is telling you what you need to hear and a great opportunity to practice humility and to, you know, have a chance to get that much needed perspective to, you know, help you be even better because I mean, we all want to do a great job at this, right? I mean, I don't think anybody gets in homeschooling thinking, ah, it doesn't matter. You know, it's a big deal. We want to do it well. And when you have a good person like that in your life that can help you, that's awesome. So that's, that's the first person we need them. And it's so great if you have one of them. The second kind of person that's the homeschool 
naysayer. The first person really is in a homeschool naysayer so much, but this kind, this we're certain it's a, it's a, it's like a continuum. Okay. So number two is the well-meaning but uninformed people. So I'm sure we've probably all encountered these folks from time to time. These are the type of people that maybe they read an article on homeschooling or didn't even read the article. Maybe they just read the headline and they got, you know, kind of a bad impression of something about homeschooling or maybe they, you know, knew somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody, um, you know, going way back and they, you know, and through the grapevine they heard that it wasn't that great or, you know, whatever. For whatever reason, this person has kind of developed this big opinion based on very little actual information. And um, these folks can come on really strong at first and it can be kind of intimidating if you have the kind of personality that is intimidated by that. But I wanna tell you something. If this is a person that you want to engage with, I mean, obviously it doesn't matter if it's just, you know, somebody you barely know or whatever, but let's say it's a relative or a friend or, you know, someone that you encounter on a regular basis that you have, you know, an otherwise good relationship with and you, you know, would like to kind of be, you know, in in a good flow with. Um, this is a person where you have an opportunity to share information with them. You can help address the concerns that they've brought up by, you know, maybe passing along a link to an article that you know brings up something like maybe you've got somebody who's like you know I don't even know how homeschoolers will go to college and then you know you see an article on Facebook that's about how Ivy League colleges are actively recruiting homeschoolers you know and you can you know tag Uncle Ted and you know say hey check this out really cool and you know so it doesn't even have to be you like telling them the facts it can be you referring them to you know other sources for the facts um, you know, so when they have, you know, some, when they have some sort of objection and you have some sort of balancing input that you can give, give it, you know, and see how it goes, you know, maybe not every time and you don't need to make it like your second job or some huge campaign because, hey, it is not your job to convince anybody that your homeschooling is okay or that they should homeschool or anything else. You know, you got enough to do. I've got enough to do. We've all got enough to do to just mind our own business but every now and then you got those other people that want to mind your business for you so you know maybe you can you can share some information you know another thing that you can do with the well-meaning but uninformed people is things like maybe your kids have like an end of year program at their homeschool co-op or maybe there's like a homeschool graduation or a recital or a play or some sort of event like that where you know they're being showcased for what they've been doing or whatever that's a great opportunity to invite people to um you know let them see like how many kids there are how normal they all look you know how, they, how you know whatever you know talent or um accomplishment has been going on you know let them see that and it it demystifies you know like whatever kind of other ideas they have about what homeschooling is and who homeschoolers are. So that could be a really nice thing. Or even just like, let's say on Facebook, like maybe this is a Facebook friend of yours, you know, a family member or something. And maybe you, you know, post pictures from a wonderful field trip that you got to go to, or a fun experiment that you got to do for science today and you share a video or something, you know, and go ahead and be like, you know, hey, Aunt Peggy, I thought you would enjoy seeing this, you know? You can, you can open up and you can share some of those opportunities. And of course, these are for people, you know, like over time as you see that they are like, oh, isn't that wonderful? And oh my goodness, I didn't know that that was available to homeschoolers. Isn't that wonderful? You'll get a sense of, you know, if the person is receptive to it and enjoying it. But a lot of times with these people, when you can give them more information and you can kind of let them in a little bit to knowing more about it, they sometimes become the biggest fans of homeschooling. All if you're just willing to just like kindly be like, you know, oh, actually, you know, yes, homeschoolers go to home, go to college all the time. Or, you know, yes, kids that are homeschooled can be in an orchestra or a marching band or, you know, whatever is the thing. So, um, 
don't be afraid to just try it out and offer them some information. <clears throat> you know, the other kind of side, <coughs> excuse me, thing that happens with these people is sometimes like a more casual type of comment where they'll say things like, you know, I don't know how you can do it. My kids drive me crazy. And you know what? Sometimes one of the best ways to diffuse a naysayer is to like surprise them by not fighting against them, but like joining up on their side. So if someone says something like that, you can say, you know, oh my goodness, you know, I know what you mean. Some days are really hard. And sometimes it's just hard to be patient and you know and I have to say to everybody okay you know we're just gonna go outside and play in the backyard for half an hour and then we'll try again you know and then they're like oh yeah that is a way or you know maybe they say you know I would just be exhausted if I had to homeschool and maybe you say well you know when my kids went to public school you know I was up early in the morning driving them to school and then it seemed like before I knew it you know, I had to interrupt the baby's nap to go back and get the kids. And then we had a whole night of homework and they were tired and I was tired. And so we were tired then too. So, you know, now homeschooling works for us in this way, you know, and they're, oh, I didn't think of that. Maybe they're saying, you know, I don't even know, you know, how, how to, how could you teach your kid calculus? I always love when people bring this up when you've got a kindergartner and they're wondering how you're going to teach physics and calculus and, and such, you know, I don't think that's, you know, possibility. And, you know, you can say, oh my goodness, I am so glad I don't have to teach my kid calculus. Because the cool thing is, you know, I've got this co-op class that's taught by a mathematician friend of ours, or you've got self-grading curriculum, or you've got online classes, or, you know, whatever is the resources. People usually do not realize how many resources homeschoolers have available to them. And so it's very easy for them to just think like, it's just a mom in the kitchen at the table, trying to teach every single thing all by herself out of her own brain, you know, instead of realizing like, no, we've got books, we've got videos, we've got classes, we've got co-ops, we've got so many ways to help our children get the education that they need. So a lot of times if you just be like, oh my goodness, yeah, that would be crazy if I had to do all that. But the good thing is I don't, because did you know I've got this? And then right there, you know, they're like, oh, cool. So, you know, you don't always have to participate in every argument that you're invited to. <laughs> so sometimes you can just be like, yeah, I know what you mean. So there's, there's our second type. The third type, these are the truly challenging types. These are the grumps. Do you have a grump? Have you encountered a grump? This is the hardest group to work with because they are not okay with your decision. No amount of information is gonna change it. They take your decision personally. You know, maybe they're, they were involved in public education or some sort of education and maybe they feel personally offended that you've chosen something else. Maybe, it, you know, maybe you're getting the, you know, it was good enough for me and my kids. You know, why isn't it good enough for yours? You know, do you think you're better than us? Um, you know, that can, that's a really, that's a tough person to deal with when they just, there ain't no pleasing them. Um, Sometimes it's hard to tell initially if you're dealing with a grump or the well-meaning but uninformed person, um, if you're more of an optimist personality or if you're not yet jaded <laughs> by these sorts of situations, you'll probably start out with both types by sharing information. You're, tr you're trying to make it better and you will be able to quickly tell which type they are because the well-meaning types are usually quite interested in the information and appreciative and they change their tune rather quickly. The grumps on the other hand, nah, that's not how it's gonna go down. With the grumps, no amount of information will satisfy. Their objections will just shift from one thing to another. So no matter how many articles you share or whatever, it's just gonna be, yeah, but what about this? And oh, what about this? And they'll just, their focus is just on the negative or whatever it is that's upsetting to them about it. 
So here's the opportunity that the grumps give you. The grumps are giving you the opportunity to get really good at boundaries. And I mean that because especially um, for younger families, you know, when you're earlier on your parenting journey or whatever, it can be a real challenge for young adults to get comfortable establishing like their own family unit autonomy and being comfortable with that. And this is something you need to do. And it takes some time to flex those muscles and to get strong enough with it, okay? And um, if you haven't read the book of Boundaries, read it. It's a good book. It'll give you some good, um, some good oomph <clears throat> and understanding of what boundaries are and how to maintain them. And it doesn't mean that you're mean. It doesn't mean that you're disrespectful. It doesn't mean that you're fighting or ugly about anything, okay? It just means that there's a line that other people don't get to cross. You know, and in your family, when the adults have made the decision for whatever, including educational decisions for the children, other people don't get a vote. Your parents don't get a vote. Your spouse's parents don't get a vote. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, neighbors, friends. No. You know, you may have trusted people in your life that you go to for advice or counsel or, you know, people like the first category, the um, genuinely concerned, you know, those people that are like on the inside track that you really value. Great. But ultimately, it's on you guys to make these decisions and to hold the line there. And when you're up against somebody, it seems like it's usually a family member is the toughest grump to deal with. Someone that you're you're seeing at holidays or on a regular basis at family events and things like that. And this can be really, really tough. You know, you can try talking to them and saying, you know, hey, this just seems like something we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. And I'm gonna ask you to just, let's just not bring it up. You know, we don't need negative comments or harassment about our homeschooling. Hopefully you can get them to at least agree to that and just let the record show that they're not for it, you know, and okay, you could just, gotcha. Um, other people aren't so great and you may have to get stronger with how you're enforcing those boundaries. But at the very least, don't allow these people to do that quizzing your children thing, you know, where they try to, you know, pop up, what's well, time seven at Thanksgiving and, you know, when did Columbus sail the ocean blue? And your poor kids are like, oh, I just wanted mashed potatoes and gravy. And, you know, just no, you know, none of that. If, if you've got people in your family that are this type and they want to like, you know, get your kid off to the side and then, you know, try to undermine you in some way, no. You just be on the lookout for that and you just cut it off at the pass. That is a no go. Uh-uh. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter which relative it is, that's just a no. Protect that line, protect your kids, don't let them be subjected to that kind of junk. You know, also don't allow any badgering or harassment of you. You know, if you're at the table and they wanna, you know, bring up some sort of challenge or whatever, you know, go prepared with some sort of way that you're gonna handle it and take care of business. You know, you do not need to, to sit there and, you know, be, be treated like some sort of, you know, criminal or second class citizen or something because you made a different choice. Um, you just, I just can't stress strongly enough how important it is to just protect your family unit and the decisions that you've made. And, you know, be kind and be humble, but be firm and don't be afraid about it, okay? Because, you know, it's just, nobody else gets a vote, you know? Um, in conclusion, I just want to say, like, over time, you're going to get better at developing kind of like your instincts for what kind of thing you're dealing with when it comes to the naysayers, and you'll get better at just, you know, kind of what kind of response just real fast that you're going to give and how you want to handle it. Um, it is helpful if you're a confident person or if you have a personality that's kind of, 
you don't care. Also, it is helpful just the farther you go down the road, you know, the proof is in the pudding. <laughs> um, you know, I have sometimes talked about, I have a friend, Jill, who homeschooled her five kids from, not all the way from the beginning, but maybe like from third grade on or whatever. Great kids, they're all grown up adults now, and um, you know, they all went on to college and career and are, you know, thriving and doing great. But, um, you know, Jill's dad was super, super against homeschooling, never had a kind word to say about it. And man, uh, that was tough for her, you know, and I'm sure you can identify because here she was, you know, making home education her life's work with her five kids that, you know, she loves like crazy. And of course, is only trying to do good things for them. And, um, and her dad was just nothing but criticism and angry about the homeschooling. And you know, over time, as the kids got older to where it was like you could see how they were turning out, at some point in that period of her life, her dad said to her, you did a really good thing. I can see it now that you did a really good thing with these kids. And I know when Jill first told that story, you know, it was quite emotional for her because, you know, although, you know, obviously she was going to do what she was going to do regardless <laughs> of, you know, whether he thought it was good or not, it meant a lot to her that finally her hard work was acknowledged and given the respect that it deserved, you know. Um... It's really good for us to remember, non-homeschoolers do not have any idea like what goes in to what we do. They, you know, how could they? You know, how could they? All of the hours <laughs> that you're spending, planning, thinking, considering, worrying, teaching, cleaning up, you know, just on and on it goes, year after year after year, child after child, it's a huge, labor of love and um you know and sometimes with mixed results no guarantees um but you just have to keep your perspective straight about why you're doing it and um and be able to you know be fairly self-sufficient with that you know hopefully you have your spouse on the same page with you hopefully you have some sort of good community homeschool network, whether it's local to you or whether it's online or whether it's events like this one where you can, you know, like kind of get your tank filled up with encouragement and, you know, helping you build your skills and fresh ideas and all of that. Um, you know, it's really important to invest in yourself, you know, a time and, and resources and education so that you can feel good about what you're doing and, you know, go forward with confidence and, and be doing a good job, right? So, um, but other people aren't going to get that. And until your kids are, you know, bigger, like maybe nobody's going to even be like, you know, sure if, if it was a good thing or whatever. And you just have to be okay with that. Um, I don't know. It's a, um, homeschooling is an interesting journey and certainly <laughs> having uh, having some naysayers along the way isn't always easy but you know it's gonna come along from time to time and you can do it um, I'm so glad that you're participating in the conference this year and that you're gonna be able to like I said connect with people that resonate with you people you know that are going to be able to teach you things and encourage you about things to give you that boost that you need to go forward in your homeschooling career and your mothering career and um and make the most of it so um if you would like to stay connected with me i would love to have you uh, you can go to enrichmentstudies.com and there are several spots that will show up on the home page where you can sign up for my newsletter it's called subscriber perks membership you get freebies every month and also i do send out um, encouragement for homeschool moms 
that's just sort of more general encouragement, not necessarily um, fine arts specific. Um, just kind of heart to heart stuff as I, as I get the brilliant idea of what it is that I want to share when I'm thinking of something that I think would, would help. Um, I do, I do send those out as well. So I would love to have you join me and, um, get to know you more and just get to help you, um, in your homeschool journey. So I hope that you'll, um, you'll take advantage of that and have a great time at the conference.